Hey there, Lou here. Today I want to talk about IMUs and IMU tools. IMUs are a staple in robotics. They allow you to understand your relative motion in space, which is something that is really useful if you're trying to determine whether motion that you're detecting with other sensors is because the environment's changing or because you're changing. So let's talk a little bit about IMUs. First, what is it? IMU stands for Inertial Measuring Unit, or inertial measurement unit, depending on your background, used to measure linear or angular motion, and some have a magnetometer, which detects the strongest magnetic field, which is sometimes the Earth's magnetic poles, but not always. Someone once asked, how are I connecting these sensors to the SparkFun Jetson? So first, we're actually using Quick connectors. Now, Quick is something that was developed by SparkFun around this, this micro, micro connector, uh, and it is pass-through, so most sensors actually have two connectors on board. You can connect it with a quick connector, and then there is a I header that is compatible with the Jetson, and it has connectors on board so that you can connect your sensor. In fact, here's the IMU itself. This particular sensor is nine degrees of freedom. It has a three axis accelerometer, a three axis gyro, and a three axis magnetometer. And for calibration reasons, it has temperatures that it, temperature that it does expose uh, through its API. You can buy this particular board on the SparkFun website. SparkFun does provide an Arduino library for it, which is what we're gonna be using in our ROS node. Now, for transparency, this chip does some really interesting things. It does something called clock stretching, which means that on the I squared C bus, it can actually say, hold on there, CPU. I'm taking my time doing something, and I'm going to prevent you from sending me data. This doesn't actually work very well on the Jetson or Raspberry Pi. Although there are workarounds, they, kind, they can negatively impact other sensors on the bus, so I'm not actually going to be using the features that require clock stretching. That specifically means that we're not going to be using some of the advanced off-board processing on this chip. We're going to have to do that locally. But fortunately, we have a workaround. City College Robotics of New York has produced a set of tools called IMU tools. Not only do they provide visualizations for IMU and magnetometer, but they also have a filtering ROS node, which can interpret raw data that we're going to be publishing from our ROS node, turn it into something more useful by using sensor fusion, monitoring it over time, and generating more specifically the orientation vector. This is now supported on Windows, uh, so you can use it on Windows or Linux. So, for this ROS node that I provided, the ROS Quick ICM2948, it uses the, the SparkFun Arduino library, imports it using the wiring for ROS, and publishes an IMU message and a magnetic field. These are published on the slash IMU topic, so IMU data raw or IMU mag, and those are customizable. The IMU message itself has a orientation quaternion plus angular velocity and linear acceleration. Now, quaternions could be an entire topic by itself, but just know it, it is a representation of a rotation. So the orientation vector and a rotation around it, angular velocity and, uh, sorry, ang angular velocity and linear acceleration. Plus we're also gonna provide a magnetic field in a three ve uh, uh, vector three. We're going to be installing IMU tools on the Jetson, specifically so we can launch the mag filter on the Jetson. Visualization will happen uh, remotely, and this can be done on Linux or Windows. The way you launch the filter is with a specific command, or you can add it to the launch file. So let's take a look at some code. So let's switch over to VS Code. This is connected to the Jetson over SSH. 
And if you've seen my other videos that leverage the Arduino uh, ROS for wiring library, you'll notice uh, the same template here. There's a couple of interesting things going on on this particular ROS node. The first thing is, is that you'll notice that we have two different topics, one for IMU and one for magnetometer. Those topics are customizable so that you, if you have multiple IMUs, you can actually rename them. Uh, and you can also publish them on uh, different subtopics. So IMU data raw, you can change to whatever you want. This particular library does not respect the I squared C address. So just be aware of that. It's either one value or another value internally. So in order to make it so that you can pass an arbitrary I squared C address, we need to fix that library. I'm going to scroll up to the top and you can see the standard get parameters. So we're reading from the launch file various parameters, or you can pass them on the command line. And you can see the default value for the IMU topic and the magnetometer topic. We're going to go ahead and start wiring and use the ICM library from SparkFun, just like you would do from an Arduino. We'll create two publishers. The first publisher is actually going to publish on the IMU topic with the sensor message IMU data type. And the second one is the magnetic field. And we're going to pull the sensor for information every 15 milliseconds or so. That's also customizable. On each callback, we're going to say, do we actually have data from the sensor? And that's what this get uh, data ready command is. Do I have actually any data? If we do have data, we need, actually, we need to process it. So we call out to the SparkFun API that says, go ahead and call the, talk to the sensor and read the data. Now our job in the ROS node is to take this raw data from the sensor and turn it into something that ROS can pr uh, process. The IMU message has very specific uh, types for or the specific units for the various components of that message. The magnetometer on the ICM is being returned in micro Teslas, so we first have to convert those to Teslas. And I have a utility function at the top that actually does that. And then we publish on the magnetometer topic. The second message is the IMU itself. The ICM libraries are in milli-Gs, which we need to convert to meters per second, and there's a utility function at the top for that. And it also returns degrees per second, which we need to turn into rads per second. And there's another utility for that. Once we have that data, we go ahead and publish it. There's actually two other things I wanted to point out. The frame ID for this message is the same for both topics. They're both coming from the same sensor. And when we talk about frames and transformations later, the frame ID is coming from that same location. The other thing is, is we are generating two messages that both have the same timestamp because we read them at the same time. Before we switch over to visualizing the IMU, I'd like to launch the Magwick filter. And Magwick is a library for doing sensor fusion of IMUs, taking that raw linear and angular acceleration and turning it into something more useful, generating things like the orientation vector and filtering that over time. So let's go ahead and start that. It is part of the IMU tool, so if you've installed it into your environment or built it, you can um, activate the environment or run it directly. So here I've launched the Magwick IMU filter on the Jetson. Now I'm going to switch over to RViz and show what that looks like. So let's go ahead and switch over to the terminal window. In this workspace, I've actually checked out the IMU tools. So their source directory, and you can see that's been checked out. I now have to activate the environment so that RViz can find it when I launch it. ROS2 run, RViz2, RViz2, RViz2 in the RViz package. 
And let's switch over to the Arviz visualization. Now, by right now, the Arviz is configured to look at the map frame, which we're not actually publishing a map frame because we haven't launched it. But we are publishing on the IMU frame, so let's switch that to the IMU frame. That was specified in our default parameters. If you click the Add button for Add Create a Visualization and scroll to the bottom, you'll see because we've activated the IMU tools environment, we now have two new visualizations, IMU Mag, or IMU and the Magnetometer. I'm going to go ahead and add both. Now these aren't actually subscribing to anything right now, so you can see that they're red. Not sure what's going on. So let's, turns out they're not subscribing to any topic. However, there is one available for Magnetometer that doesn't require any filtering. So selecting that, And whoop, I forgot to actually launch it on this site. So let's go ahead and launch that. So now that that is running, the visualization will now show the magnetometer moving. Expanding IMU, you'll see that we actually have two different IMU uh, topics. One is the data raw and the other is data. Now the Magic ROS node is actually subscribing to the data raw that we're publishing from our ROS node, processing it and publishing it on a new topic. Data raw doesn't actually have enough information for our viz to visualize it. However, the filtered one does. And you can see as I move the sensor, it's reflected in the visualization. That's kind of cool. Now, what if we wanted to do something more? In the previous video, I created a ROS node for a depth sensor. What if I wanted to show that depth data relative to the sensor as if I was stacking them on top of each other? So let's switch over to our terminal window and show what that looks like. I'm opening up a new terminal and using this command, ROS2, TF2 ROS, and I'm creating a static transform publisher with a couple of pieces of information. In this case, I'm just saying that the IMU and depth sensor are in the same place, which isn't realistic. But when we talk about transform trees and URDF in future videos, this will make much more sense. So what I'm saying here is, hey, ROS, I'm creating a transform that connects these two sensors together. Now, I do have to launch that data, so let's go ahead and switch back to VS Code and launch a new terminal window. ROS to launch. ROS quick time of flight. And it was called quick launch dot pi. Now this sensor takes up to 10 seconds to start because it's actually doing a firmware update every time it starts. So after a few seconds, we can switch back to our viz and visualize the point cloud data. And so here's that point cloud. So I'm holding up the, the point cloud sensor and the IMU. Now, as I turn the IMU, nothing's happening, right? Or is it? Well, why is that? That's because I was using the wrong transform frame. 
The way the magnet, the Magwick filter works is it actually um, creates a parent frame on top of the IMU called odometry. It's interpreting the data from the, the IMU and creating that new frame. I am parenting the depth data onto the IMU. The IMU is parented onto the odometry frame. That's going to make much more sense when we talk about transform. However, this is basically what we're doing is we're connecting these two sensors together through a transform tree. You can even visualize that transform tree. There is another visualizer in Arviz called TF. And you can see what that tree looks like by looking at the frames. So the depth frame is parented to the IMU, the IMU is parented to odometry, and the odometry is not really parented to anything. So we've set our RViz frame to visualize it right there. And you can see that it has its own set of tree or coordinate systems to bind up against. Anyway, uh, I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good one.